Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and in this episode of DIY Gas, I'm going to show you how to hide that nasty silver bezel that so many television manufacturers think that they need to put around the screen to make it look pretty. Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm deleting it and how I'm deleting it, but first, we need to go into the room where the magic happens. If you guys watched the last episode, we were in the same bedroom, although this time it's minus Miss Barnacles. But we still got the pussy. Ha <laughs> ha! What's up, Moo? Come on down. Come on. All right, so if you guys saw the last episode of DIY Gasm, here is just a little 360 in my room. We're actually shooting this during the daytime today, so we might get a little bit of that daylight magic. But that right there is the TV in the last episode. I showed you guys how to hang on the wall. So if you guys are wondering how I got a 75-inch TV on the wall, um, I have a whole video on how to select the bracket, how to mount the bracket, and all that good stuff so your TV doesn't fall off the wall. Also, if you have a keen eye, you've probably noticed that I went ahead and uh, brought over some of my components from last time. I now have my stereo receiver actually hooked up and functioning. I got my center channel, I got my front left and right channel, and I got my rear channels back there both working. I also have these set is up firing for Dolby Atmos. Um, I've been playing around with it a little bit. It kind of works. I may do a video on it. I also notice my wires are still visible here. I need to bring up my little sleeve. I need to actually tape that in place. Okay, so I can emphasize the problem. This is usually, you know, where we're laying. Oh, uh, where the magic happens. We're watching TV and you can see against the black wall, it actually helps with the contrast of the picture if I had the TV on, but you got that giant silver outline. It drives me absolutely nuts. What ends up happening is all that light goes boom, bounces off the white back wall, comes back and lights up that freaking bezel. So I wanna hide it as much as humanly possible. Now to do that, I'm gonna use electrical tape. Now a lot of people told me I should use gaffer tape. Unfortunately, I don't have any black gaffer tape. This is all I could find. It was black and it sticks to glass pretty well. So we're gonna see how well this actually works for hiding it. I realize the electrical tape's kind of shiny, so it still could tend to kick back a little bit of light, but it's going to be nowhere near as bad as the freaking silver bezel that's already on there. Also, some of you with a keen eye may have noticed that even upstairs in my nerd cave, I painted the whole back wall black. Now, the reason that I do that is it kind of helps to hide the bezel. If the whole background is black, you can't really see the edges of the TV that well, especially when you're focused on a bright image. I did the same thing in here when I had a projector set up, and when I set up the LCD screen, I still got the same effect minus that bezel. So the idea being is, if you're looking at a black wall, even in a lit room, it helps give you a boost in contrast, or at least I should say a perceived boost in contrast of the image. And then when the lights are out in the room, you get less reflection bouncing back and forth between the walls, which makes the room seem even darker, just painting one wall. Give it a try. Let me know how you like it. And if you hate it, paint over it with white. All right, so the first thing I want to do is pull the TV out as far as possible. The mount that I selected actually allows me to pull the TV out a couple of inches. It also allows me to access everything that's behind the television. All right, I'm a shorty, so we're going to bust out the step ladder. All right, so I figured a good starting point would be right along this edge, just so we have a comparison between the two before we proceed. Now, before we get started, make sure the screen is very, very clean, because I am going to overlap the glass just a little bit. I literally used a washer egg just to see how many people got triggered by that down in the comments, <laughs> but normally I'd use a microfiber cloth. I figured what I would do is take and start out the electrical tape because it does have a tendency to get wrinkled and you don't want to stretch it too much either because you don't want to under tension so something like that and i figured i'd let gravity do most of the work i don't know is this stool rated for this much fatty so now what i'm gonna do is just pull out one big strip stretch it just like so oh that didn't work make sure you have a lot of electrical tape when you start with this one i figured i'd go ahead and turn on the tv because it'll make it a lot easier for me to see where the glass ends and the pixels start now up close here you can see how obnoxious that silver bezel is, and it's shiny. It's really shiny. As a matter of fact, this whole screen is like a giant mirror, if I'm, if I'm honest. It's seriously a hell of a nice TV, though. I really love these Samsung QLED screens. This is two generations old, and it's still brighter than most of the screens I've seen. It's got a pretty decent viewing angle, too. So I ended up turning on the TV so I can see where the pixels are, because on this particular panel, the glass goes all the way over to the very edge, and but the pixels start a little bit in so i want to cover that little black strip also just to make it look uniform and i also realized that the tape doesn't like to stick to the back of the screen it loves sticking to the glass though so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with a really 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 long strip over the top and i'm going to put it way around back and push on it a lot because i want it to stick really good and the more surface area i have the better off i am that looks perfect what i'm going to try to do is pull it all the way down first let's go ahead and reel some out hope it holds I want to overshoot quite a bit, and then I'm going to let the tape do the work for me. Let me see how my overlap looks. Okay, I'm going to take a bunch off the end here, tear it off. I'm going to roll it all the way up and around the back side, just to get some good surface on there. And then I'm going to roll it over with my finger. Starting at the top, I want to pull it outward, and just push it around the corner. Push it. 
push it real good. No want any bubbles, so push outward while you're doing it. It grips the glass really, really well. I'm trying not to get any bubbles here. It actually works pretty damn good. Okay, now that I've rolled it over the edge, I want to make sure that it stays there. So I'm just going to go up and down and keep working it. Keep working it. And I can clean up those edges here in a bit. Let's see how that looks. So right there, you can see the silver bezel at the top. Then we'll go over here and you can see the black going down. It actually looks really, really uniform. It's a little ripply at the bottom and at the top, and I think I can clean that up on a second pass. There are a couple little bubbles. Those I could work out using like a credit card, just like if you're doing a screen protector. You can see right there, just using my thumb, I was able to get that bubble out, no problem. Now, I didn't anticipate this being perfect. I just want it to be better than what it was. And then maybe in a future episode, we can find a better candidate for doing this. But everybody's got some electrical tape. All right, only three more sides to go. I want to get the hard parts out of the way first, so now I'm going to do the top. And hopefully I don't fall and eat crap like I did in the last video. I'm going to have to start and then scoot over as I go. You know, in hindsight, this would have been a lot easier to do when I had the TV down before I mounted it. So if that's an option for you. Yeah. All right, same thing as before. I'm going to go really long on the top piece. Give me a nice big old anchor to go off of. Come down. Whoa, almost eat shit. Scoot on over. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. Don't die, Jerry. Don't die, bro. All right, let's see if we can stretch it and get it lined up. It looks like it wants to droop just a little bit. So I'm going to pick it up here in the center and put it there first. Then I'm going to go the rest of the way. Take a big old piece off the end. Wrap it around tight. I want to make sure it stays put. Same technique as before. I'm just going to roll it with my hands like this. One little place there where the glass is a little bit more recessed in. So you can see a little bit of a line there. Remember, we're going for better, not perfect. Could have done a little bit better. Now from where you guys are, it probably looks good. But let me show you what it really looks like. It's still better than the silver bezel, but you can see along the top, there are some little ripples. So that side looks perfect. But the side I tried to redo here, no bueno. So we got to do it again. You know, if at first you don't succeed, <laughs> make sure you got a lot of electrical tape. All right, this time I'm going to try a little bit different technique. A uh, horizontal, it's okay to let the weight of the tape, but it droops. So I'm going to go a little bit at a time and just lay it down as I go this time. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let out, stretch it, put equal tension, and then lay it down like that. Go across, do it in small sections. Ooh, this is going to be the part that gets me is having to move because it's such a big TV. That's going to be where the ripple happens. Let's see if we can recover it. Okay, looks like we did. It's really hard not to get impatient. That looks much better. Get a nice long piece, stretch it around the back, grip it into place. All right, now here is the part where I screwed up last time. We're just going to go nice and slow, curl it up and over. Nice and slow. God, this would have been so much easier when I was laying on the bed. Brain, why can't you come up with ideas in the moment? I guess I didn't really notice the bezel that much until afterward. All right, that looks way, that looks a thousand times better. All right, we now have three of the sides wrapped. Save the hardest for last. That's gonna be right down here along this edge because we got to deal with the Samsung logo, which I don't really want to see, so I'm going to cover that too. So, final edge. So far, I have to say for just a quick and dirty fix, this actually works pretty good. Oh, well, Houston, we got a problem. Uh, I got really sweaty while I was doing this, so I took a little break and I decided, you know what, I'm just going to dry out my shirt. By the way, you guys should buy that, shop.barnard.com, by putting it on the air conditioner. And now it's all dry and ready to go. The only problem is... I have seemed to have misplaced the electrical tape. This is the waste product. Uh, I don't know where it went. <laughs> Hopefully I can finish this video. Oh, it was blending in with the top of the speaker. All right, whew, still in business. God, we're running out quick though. Hopefully I don't make too many more mistakes. Oh man, it's all nice and dry again. Contrary to popular belief, fat people don't like to sweat. It's just something we naturally do. Actually, I take that back. There are some times where we want to sweat. Eh? 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 Hmm. Like, favorite, and subscribe, and make sure you ring the bell. <laughs> but you know you want to. Come on, just do it. I can wait. All right, guys and gals, let's do this. All right, again, start with the long strip. I'm gonna go around the back. Get it right along that pixel edge on the glass. I'll tell you what, this electrical tape does not like to stick to anything but the glass. So if your bezel is not glass, I highly recommend that you use something to anchor the tape around the back, like gaffer tape, painter's tape, duct tape even, something that's gonna hold it in place. Um, but the tension will be fine across the front. Now we learned from the top that we're gonna get a little bit of a droop. So what we wanna do is we wanna manually come in and just tack it in place. I actually think I was a little too overzealous with the last one and got too close to the pixels and may have covered a few up. No big deal. So this time I'm gonna take care to make sure I'm just a little bit below the pixel line. And there it is. Nice big long strip off the end and around the back up diagonally at an angle. But now what I'm gonna do is just 
Work it along the bottom edge, just like we did before. You can see that's where the Samsung logo was. So it's not really gonna wanna bend around that too well. We'll do the best we can. And we'll just keep going. We'll just keep rolling it over. I'm actually hand holding this, so I hope I'm not making anybody too sick. Keep rolling. Keep on rolling. Keep on rolling, 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 rolling. That doesn't look half bad. All right, so just going around right here. It's looking good. The tape is a little reflective, but it's more of a matte finish than the silver that was underneath it. And against the black wall with all the lights out, I don't think I'm going to be able to see it at all, but we'll put that to the test. I want to figure out what I want to do with this little Samsung logo, though, because it didn't quite cover it all the way, so I may just get in there with like a knife or something and just get around the edges a little better than run some tape up under the back. But I do like that I don't see that anymore. But here, let's, uh, let's look at it from a distance. With all the lights on in the room, we clearly see no more silver bezel. So up close, it might not look perfect, but that's pretty darn good. Got another one coming off. See right here, it does not want to stick well. So I'm going to take a moment and go find some other tape that we can use to anchor it behind the back. So here's a little irony for you. All I could find was white gaffer tape to use as the anchor, but it's behind the screen, so I really don't care. Gaffer tape is amazing, though. If you've never used it before, it's a little on the spendy side, but it's less destructive than duct tape and holds just as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is pulled tightly around the corner. All right, just like so. And what that's doing is pulling the tape tight around the top there. As you can see, I already did it on the bottom. And if you pull it really tight before you anchor it, you don't have all those little like jabby pieces sticking out on the corners. It actually pulls around really nice. By the way, that's the video you guys should go watch if you haven't already. It's the DIY Gasm. Before this, my wife joins me. She is hilarious. Just beware of lots of sexual innuendos from now on. Oh, yeah, go watch that one too. But really, guys, you should watch all my videos because YouTube doesn't promote me anymore. So I rely on you guys watching my videos and sharing my videos so that I can afford to pay my power bill. I don't know, you guys buying it? No? Eh, I tried. By the way, all the materials that I'm using are linked in the video description. So check the video description. That's where they're linked, including this awesome stool that is somehow holding all 330 pounds of me up. <laughs> Beefcake! One thing I do like about this mount I used for this TV is it supports up to 150 pounds, but it also does this. Check this out. Check this out. So you push it flush to the wall, and then you can also just pull out one side. So you can tilt it towards who, whichever viewer is watching the TV. It's kind of cool. That's America's ass. Well, it is now anyways. All right, last anchor. When you pull it tight, it rounds off the edge. It looks really nice, actually. The irony is we're removing the black border and then we're putting white tape behind it. Don't judge me. And gaffer tape also holds up really well under heat. All right, well, that whole job took about 20 minutes and I just had to redo one of the sides, so not too bad. And here we have the final result. No more big, bright Samsung label in the middle. The transitions on the corners look pretty clean. I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. I mean, obviously there's other solutions I'm gonna try as time goes on, but this was the cheapest and most obvious. In DIY gasm, I generally try to go for stuff that people just have around the house, especially the jerry-rigged approach. So, but I may even try using some, uh, some gaffer tape that I actually paint with something like Vanta Black. Oh, you know what else would work really good? Going to the fabric store and getting that felt liner. You know, you can get like just strips of felt. I could get that and hot glue it along the edge because hot glue I found comes off of glass really, really easy and doesn't damage it at all. You just heat it up, wipe it away, put a little gooby gone on it and you're done. I bet you that would work amazing. You're not going to be able to do that in 20 minutes though, but uh, this is a good fix. I like the end result. Let's uh. Let's close up the windows and see what it looks like in a completely dark room now. Because the goal is for me not to be able to see the border of the TV when I'm watching a video against the black backdrop. I want it to look just like you're in a movie theater. All right, first we got to close the door. Goodbye, son. I'll miss you. Not really. Me and the son aren't that good of friends. All right, so until I wait for nighttime, this will at least give me a pretty good idea. Hey, if you guys are wondering, that's actually my side of the bed. So my wife's perfectly lined up on the TV. So what I do is when she's not watching, I just turn it towards me a little bit. So you literally just push in on the side. And there you go. All right, it's time to see the fruits of my labors. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, one other cool thing. Check this out. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Still going. People ask me why I watch movies in the bedroom. This is why. I have a nice bed. Even the feet can come up too. So I can sit here. I can watch my movie on a giant screen. I can tell you right now, that border is not showing up at all. Check it out. No more silver border. Even with this ambient light in the room, it just completely disappears against the black wall. That is fantastic. Also, after watching this movie, don't forget to go watch that one because uh, it was kind of funny because my wife wasn't strong enough to help me get the... TV up on the wall and some antics ensued. Also finally wired up the stereo. See, it's turned on right now. Wild. Make 
make sure we got no shimmy. It is rock solid. Oh. You like that? <laughs> they get you excited? <laughs> you guys should go watch all my diy gasm episodes i do all kinds of crazy stuff also if this is your first time finding my channel i do a lot of content revolving around 3d printing uh simulation vr programming um i've dabbled in just about everything nerdy i've been dormant for a while if you guys haven't seen me around uh but now i'm starting to get back to it i just released one video yesterday now i'm releasing another video today so uh i'm hoping to keep them coming for you guys so please Hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. Um, check back frequently too, because YouTube doesn't notify people for some reason anymore when I release content. Damn you, YouTube. But guys, I'm gonna call that a success areno in the words of Ned Flanders. So the back wall is flat black. Now, if I could find some electrical tape that had no sheen to it, that would have obviously been a better choice. But compared to that giant silver bezel that you guys saw in the beginning of the video, this is a massive improvement. And the nice thing is it still looks good even with the lights on. So let me turn on all the lights. This is one thing I didn't like about having projectors. I used to have a projector right up there on the ceiling. But the reason I got rid of the projectors was one, the bulbs were getting really expensive to replace constantly. And two, you just cannot compete with the brightness of like a QLED screen. I mean, it's just, it's insane. I can have all this ambient light in the room. Like here, I'll even open up these blinds. And yes, I know my windows are filthy. But that's with all the lights on in the room. That's the blinds open, everything. And you can still clearly see the television. Almost as good as with all the lights off. That's that's what I like about this, guys. Also, if you guys are curious about any of the components I use, center channels, speakers, all that stuff, I will have links in my Amazon affiliate store in the video description, along with links to the electrical tape that I used for this project, because I'd imagine that different brands of electrical tape probably have different adhesive characteristics. And if you guys have a better way of doing this, please let me know down in the comments. I'm not above improving myself. DIYgasm and Jerry Rigged is all about just trying to figure things out on my own, not going and researching the best ways to do things or how other people have done things just try stuff out sometimes it works good sometimes not so good but each step we learn something new and hopefully this inspired you to do this to your television or even your computer monitors i found this technique also works good if you have computer monitors that don't have black bezels or if you want to get rid of that nasty line between them you can run a strip of uh, tape right down between them and it'll make it look like one continuous monitor because there won't be any crack. Who knows, maybe another video? And last but not least, if you guys did not see my video about these little cheap inexpensive USB fans, I'm gonna link that down in the video description because if you have a setup like mine with all these components, everything nowadays has a USB port on it. Like for instance, my AV receiver tends to get really hot. So I have a USB port right here on the back of this bad boy. So I just bend it down and point it this way and now I got nice airflow run along the back of the stereo receiver. Just enough that, you know, it can help just cool it a little better. I also plan to add a second fan on this that's actually pointing up and pushing a little bit of air up behind the screen itself. Because these screens are freaking expensive and a little bit of airflow is all you need. And I definitely recommend it for console gaming systems because these things run really super hot. So guys, I'll have a link in the video description to an entire video on how I use those fans to cool all my networking equipment and my NASs and everything like that. But I think this project turned out pretty good. If you liked the video, please slap the like button. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and hit dislike. That information helps me become a better content creator. But as far as just a project that took maybe an hour in total with everything going back and forth and just using a little bit of electrical tape, I think the end result speaks for itself. Now, you're probably not going to get as much mileage if you have a white wall behind it because then you're just going to have the same contrast problem as before. So this is more for people that already have a dark backdrop. But... I also encourage you to try painting your wall. I know it seems really intimidating and scary, but if you screw up, you just go match color, match your white paint and paint over it again. I've painted over that wall about six times since I've lived in this house for various different projector setups and integrated screens. And it's not difficult to do. And the nice thing about black is it doesn't have to be perfect. Like with white, every imperfection shows. With black, like stuff like this and little dents and texture changes, as you back away, you notice them a lot less than if it was painted a light color. So you can get away with a lot with black. If you accidentally scrape the wall or punch a hole in it doing stupid stuff, really easy to fix. Oh, and one more thing I always forget. I have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Barnacles. Everybody has one, right? Every The last video you watched this before, this was probably like, consider joining my Patreon. Mine, I have over a hundred videos called Jerry and the Raw that are just completely raw, uncut videos I shoot. No jump cuts, nothing, just single take, uh, anywhere from 15 minutes to two hours long. In total, I release an episode about every two to three days over there, and it's more about my personal life and what's going on and why you haven't been seeing so much content from me in the past and talking about medical issues and stuff like that. Um, stuff that I don't want on the main channel. So if any of that stuff interests you, my the life of me behind all this, patreon.com forward slash Barnacles, and I appreciate your patronage. And if you guys cannot afford 
to become a patron, I just want to thank you right now for even just taking the time to watch my video because that's time you could have been spent doing anything else, but you chose to spend it here. And I appreciate it, and so does my family. Thank you so much, and you have a great day. You know, I'm pretty proud that that's all the electrical tape I wasted. Huh, that went better than I expected. Oh, and never mind the tissue box next to my bed. I was, uh, I was sick. Achoo! Oh, and just in case you guys were getting triggered, I did go over it with a microfiber cloth and clean it when I was done. I noticed right after I wrapped on the video <laughs> that there was just tons of fingerprints everywhere, and I knew you guys were going to go to town in the comments. So now if I see anything in the comments about all the finger smudges and prints on the screen, I know you didn't watch it all the way to the end. Ha-ha! That's how we get you. Ha, ha, ha.